What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're gonna talk all about propagation, but not what we've talked about in the past. I'm gonna be sharing with you a very amazing game-changing method on how to propagate your cuttings basically DIY style. So where this came about was based on necessity. Um, you know, give you a little background context. I do a lot of propagation. I do a ton of propagation if I've not yet already disclosed this because I love getting free plants. It's a great way to get exactly what you wanna grow because if I start from a seed of this basil plant, um, number one, it takes some time. It takes two or three months to get the basil seed to a stage that's even equivalent to my cutting. So it saves time that way. It saves money because I'm starting with one plant and I'm just growing that one plant out numerous times. I don't need anything else. The other thing too is it uh, is it's a direct clone. So if I really like the flavor of this plant, I really like the disease resistance, the growth habits and things like that. If I start from a seed, I cannot guarantee that that is going to be exactly what I want. Whereas a clone is by definition exactly the same. Genetically, it is exactly identical to the mother plant. And so if you really like this plant, you're going to guaranteed get exactly this plant just multiplied by 10, 20, 30, however many cuttings you take. I love propagation. I do a lot of it. And one of the downsides to propagation is that the kits that are available to us gardeners are either really inexpensive, super cheaply made, and you usually end up killing about half of your cuttings in the process. And then on the flip side, they assume you're growing marijuana, and which is a very high dollar crop. Let's just be honest there. So they assume that you're doing that. And so they sell these super insanely expensive, uh, overbuilt, highly technological devices that you know can tech, they can uh, they have like a little LCD screen that checks the humidity, it checks the parts per million of nutrients, it cycles the water through, it mists the top of the canopy to keep the leaves damp. It has grow lights built in. It has little louvers that move and open and close during uh, during hot you know hot temperature periods so that it can better uh, be climate controlled. It has a built-in heat pad. I mean it sounds like I've been doing a little bit too much research in, into this category. And that's because, well, I have been. I've been trying to find the best propagation system out there because I do a lot of it. I do a ton of propagation. And I would say I propagate on a yearly basis anywhere between 300 and 500 cuttings, which for a hobbyist gardener, those small setups are just not cutting the mustard. And the big setups, they're like 300 to $500 not into that. And so I just was like, look, I have to find something that's going to have a lot of those benefits that the expensive setups have with the cost savings uh, that the inexpensive uh, setups have. And that's where I stumbled across this DIY system that, you know, it's, I think it's a pretty good, uh, I think it's a pretty good alternative. And so, so pretty good that I would consider it the best out there for my needs. And that's why it's a game changer for me. So I'm gonna share with you uh, kind of this setup. I'm gonna show you how it works. And I'm really gonna walk you through just why I love it so much because it does really kind of take both the benefits of both and put them together. The first thing you're going to need first and foremost is a growing medium. A lot of people ask if you have to go with rock wool and the answer is no. You do not have to go with rock wool under any circumstances. If you don't like rock wool, you don't, uh, you know, you don't like the, um, some of the negative stuff that comes with rock wool, don't use it, you don't have to. I don't mind using rock wool and I prefer it because I'm growing hydroponically. So for that, I go with rock wool. But you can use things like sterilized sand, perlite and vermiculite, three great options. You wanna go with something that is sterile, first and foremost. It has to be sterile because anytime you incorporate bacteria into a propagation setup, just like you're able to, uh, you know, the, the environment is so climate controlled, so ideal, that it's also ideal for growing bacteria and fungi. So you want it to be as sterile as possible. That's why I like to go with rock wool. But if you're going with something like sand, like let's say you're gonna move the, the plants out to the garden, right? You don't necessarily wanna put, well, you don't really wanna put them in rock wool because they won't transplant well. Because the rock wool, the rock wool it just holds on to too much moisture out in the garden and you'll end up ending up with, with rot and stuff. So it's not ideal for moving out in the garden. And so in that case, if I was moving them out in the garden, um, what I would do is I would use sand, perlite, or vermiculite. And sand is by far the most readily accessible and the most inexpensive out there. All you have to do is just go to your hardware store, get a 50 pound bag of sand, 
take a few gallons of it, run it under some water until the water runs clear. You gotta get all that nasty sediment out because you do not want that in your system. Once you wash all that sediment out and the water runs crystal clear, then what you wanna do is drain all that extra water out, put it into one of those cheap, chintzy little uh, um, pie pans or like a casserole pan, those aluminum casserole pans, throw it in your oven at 350 to 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. And what that's going to do is gonna bake off all that water, but it's also going to sterilize the medium. It, any bacteria, any fungi, any weed seeds, anything like that, it's all gonna be killed off. That's very important. Um, if you're going with perlite and vermiculite, those are by nature pretty sterile mixes. You don't have to do anything else with them. You can use those as well. So uh, all of those options are wonderful growing mediums and they're all going to get the job done. The next thing you're going to need is you're going to need a tray. Now this tray here is a 50 cell tray um, and all you have to do is make sure you get one that has holes in the bottom. I like having the holes in the bottom because it allows this tray to drain so it doesn't hold onto the water. It also allows the, um, there to be water exchange from up above to down. So the next thing you're going to need to get is a flood pan. And this flood pan is going to allow you to use this as a water reservoir so that when you put your, when you put your, your cutting tray into it, it's basically going to wick. Any water from down below is going to wick up and it's not going to flood the seedlings out. It's gonna, again, give you uh, moisture control. It's going to give you control over humidity because as that water from down below uh, evaporates, it's going to get trapped underneath the second flood dome that you're going to put on top. These are just holeless uh, trays. There's no, these are deep. They're like two and a half inches deep, no holes on the bottom. So it's gonna hold water. That goes right on top like that. And that is your game changing cutting setup. This thing can do 50 cuttings per session. If I'm doing basil, I can turn over a cutting in about three to five days. So uh, every three to five days, I can get 50 cuttings. If I were to multiply this, say by you know 10 or 20 setups, you can make a really nice side business. As we've talked about before, growing basil for a side business, um, if you haven't seen that video, I'd recommend checking it out. Um, I mean, you can seriously get some production and we're talking efficient, we're talking uh, cost effective, and we're talking easy to do. <laughs> There's nothing complicated about this. So uh, yeah, let's get started. All right, so all we're going to do, like I said, is just take your rock wool cube, break it off, stick it in. Two inch squares accepts a two inch rock wool cube pretty nicely. Now you will notice that the tray, it's not quite as deep as the flood pan. And how that, or why that is, is so that the flood pan can act as a water reservoir and there can be some water down below that is not flooding in here and just flooding the seedlings all the time. As the water level drops, the roots are gonna be encouraged to go down and that's what's going to encourage root development to go down through the holes in these, in these trays. It's gonna encourage them to go through the holes and down into the water reservoir and that's gonna get you good root development. That's very, very important for creating a healthy seedling. If the water just came to the roots all the time, what you're gonna have is root rot. So that's why I really enjoy having um, about a quarter inch to a half inch gap below, below this black tray here. All right, and so we're just gonna fill these up. I'm not going to do all of 50 cuttings because I don't know if I can get 50 cuttings off these plants, but um, I am gonna do as many as I can. So we'll start with we'll start with this here and we'll see how many that is. So that's, uh, that's uh, 15 cuttings. So let's see how that gets us. All right, and it's as simple as this. We just look for a good cutting that has a really nice long stem to it. That's going to give us something good to stick into our rock wool cube. I've got one there, I already got one cutting there. And all we're going to do is we're just going to come in through here and get some, get some good uh, cuttings. I like to look for stems that are about an inch and a half, two inches long. That way it's going to really have a nice stem to root on. There we go. And it looks like I'm hacking this plant back, but it'll, it'll bounce back no time. Now, if you end up, if you end up uh, not having a long enough stem, just kind of trim it up. If there's some leaves and stuff, trim the leaves up so you can kind of make that stem longer. All we're going to do is just take our tool, 
make a little hole to accept the cutting. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add our water and flood this, flood this tray. All right, now that I got some water in the bottom reservoir, I'm just going to set my propagation tray in there. And water is going to come through those holes a little bit. Um, but as the rock wool cubes wick up that water and as the water evaporates, um, there'll be less and less. So ideally, I want about a quarter inch of water coming into these cells. So then all I do is just take my cuttings. I stick them in. I mean, can you get that? Can you get any more simple than that? I mean, geez, this is just, this is so easy. It's so efficient. And um, oh my gosh, it's like, compared to the other methods that are out there, I don't know why you would pick any other method. It just, it has so many, so many uh, benefits. And hopefully you can see that from just how unbelievably simple this is. we go. And we're just going to keep, keep sticking these cuttings in here. I think I'll stop at 15 cuttings just because I, I don't really need much more than 15 at this time. So I'll leave the rest of this blank here. But um, you know, it's, uh, as you can see, it definitely has room to expand. So there you go. There is a super inexpensive propagation station for less than $10. And how that's broken down is the top and bottom flood trays are buck 50 each. One is the humidity dome and the other is the water reservoir. So that's $3 for that. The 50 cell insert was a buck 50 as well. That's really heavy duty. You don't have to go that heavy duty, but for me, I want something that's gonna last. That was a buck 50 as well. And so that brings the total for this, the setup to 450, which is, ridiculously inexpensive. Then the most expensive thing is kind of the last thing and that's the growing medium. You don't have to have this system be any more than five dollars if you go with an inexpensive growing medium like sand. I mean heck you can get sand for free at a local beach but you don't necessarily uh, you don't necessarily have to spend less than ten you don't necessarily have to spend ten dollars. Um, this just cost me ten dollars because I went with rock wool, which is fairly expensive. This, uh, this big bundle here was $8 for this whole bundle. So that's why this puts me at right around $10. So hopefully this is like a complete game changer for you as well. I know when I came across this, you know, even with the cost of the rock wool, I thought, holy smokes, even with the cost of the rock wool, it's cheaper than some of the cheapest, crappiest setups out there. And yet it provides so many of the benefits that the really expensive setups have. Why wouldn't I like this method? So uh, yeah, ever since using this method, I've been sold. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. Make sure to throw a like up there if you did. It helps spread this video around to more people. And again, uh, we are gonna be outside very soon. The weather is starting to warm up. So we're gonna be out there tapping maple trees, uh, doing stuff on composting, a lot of really super early, uh, late winter, early spring prep. We're gonna be doing that as well very soon. And we're gonna be doing lots more in the grow room. So make sure you have not, uh, if you've not yet subscribed, make sure to do that. And as always, we'll catch you all in the next episode. Grow bigger, go home. Bye.